of you to worshiping the Almighty God. And I uh, wanted to say that there are actual scriptural verses to go with this day. And these come from the book of Proverbs. And this is uh, chapter 31, verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Thank you, mothers, for all that you have done for us. And now we're going to, the uh, choir is going to sing a couple of songs, and then you will be invited to sing as well. Take care, bye. Please stand. Join.
maybe, but it's just the way, it's just something that the way they're made. And so maybe we need to overlook and forgive that on that. Or it could be a mistake. Do we all make mistakes? And once again, what's a pencil do? It helps fix a mistake, okay? So what do pencils and forgiveness and God have in common? Oh, you're thinking on it. Huh? If you forgive somebody, what does that mean? If you truly forgive somebody, yes. They'd be nice to you. Well, they'll be nice to you, but okay. So let's say when you're playing playing football, we'll use football for something, and the same guy on the other team has come after you six times. Is that his job to do that because of your position and his position? <coughs> yeah. Does it make you mad that he's came after you six times and knocked you down? No. It doesn't make you mad that somebody can knock you down six times. No, we don't want to. What he's supposed to do. You don't want to push back or hit? No. Uh, you say that now, but I bet you when you're on that field, you're getting pretty mad. And I bet when you talk to your mom's, dad's, grandparents, friends, you're getting pretty mad at that person. You did? Did it hurt? Well, I just remember when I worked on the line at my work, it was called assembly, and people used to push toolboxes. And it would start making me mad when they kept pushing them while I was trying to put the drawer in there. And I would want to take those toolboxes and go and watch them go back the other way. But those people were pushing them at me because somebody was pushing it at them. Okay? So now we're going to get to the Bible part of this. So Peter went to Jesus and he said, Hey, how often should I forgive my brother's sin against me? If my brother sins against me, which means your friends or someone you don't know or whatever, how many times should I forgive them? And that would mean they've done something, they've insulted you, they they lied to you, they made a mistake and they didn't mean to, but it upset you. How many times do you think Peter thought was enough times to forgive somebody? Four. Oh, he's going to give you more than that. He wanted seven. He thought seven times, and if, if I forgive you seven times, that makes me a good person because I let you buy with it seven times. What did Jesus tell him? Do you know what Jesus said for forgiving people? Seven times seventy. How many times is that? No. Seven times seven is what? Forty thousand. And so if it's 790, 490 times, that's right. Could you keep track of 490 times of somebody doing something to you? No. That's how come Jesus made that great big thing out there. Because how many times have you said and done something to your mom or your dad and you felt bad about it? Huh? Yes, your brother counts too. How many, times have you, how many times have you done or said something to your brother and you didn't mean it afterwards because you don't want something to happen to your brother? Over a hundred. Over a hundred. And does your brother still love you and forgive you and can one of these? I don't believe that. Because I think when there's something you want to get, you come and you say, hey. Help me? Have you done? Yeah. 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 So, the point of this is, in life, we want to keep track of what people have done to us, whether it's our brother, our sister, somebody we don't know, someone on the highway, road rage. <laughs> you know, we want to keep track of that car or that person. But you know what God does? We ask for forgiveness of something. He takes that eraser. He erases it, and he never brings it up again. The only one that brings it back up again is us. He forgives us, and he wants you to forgive yourself. Doesn't mean to keep doing the same mean thing to your brother all the time. Okay. But forgiveness is an important thing, because if you hang on to the ugly, you'll be bigger your entire life, and God wants to happy you in Okay, so let's go ahead now and collect the buckets.
for our announcements for this week, uh, go ahead and advance our slide. Don't forget, in the back are the, the new calendars for the month, so you can keep up with the various things that we have scheduled going on, so make sure to check that. Next Saturday is the Church Fish Fry. It'll be from 5 to 7, so make sure to bring friends with you, have great food, it'll be a great time. We'll have both carry-out uh, as well as the dine-in, and also on, in the back by the offering receptacle is the sign-up sheet if you want to sign up to help uh, bring anything or to help serve. We'll find a place for you to, to help, so make sure to check that on your way up. Adult Sunday School every Sunday morning from 9 to 9.45 downstairs in the Fellowship Hall, so be sure uh, to avail yourself of that opportunity. And today, as we said, is Mother's Day. We do want to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day, all you mothers, and those that are watching us online as well. Uh, we give thanks for you on this very special day, but honestly, we do every day. At the back of the church as you leave this morning, ladies, you'll find flowers back there. Make sure to take one of those as you leave on behalf of the church of saying happy Mother's Day to you. Is that all our announcements? Give them the hand. Prayer requests, yes. Does anyone have any prayer requests that we need to remember today? Yes, ma'am. Uh, my sister's my granddaughter, Ellie Ann Woodson, has actually leads that's incurable and she's only nine years old. Oh, okay. All right, we'll remember her. My oldest son, Luke, was in for surgery Tuesday morning. Okay. Others? Okay. Then let's go to the Lord in prayer as we remember these as well as those that we have on our uh, church list as well. Father, we thank you for this day and for the opportunities that we have to come to your house to worship you. And Father, we bring all these needs to you. And Father, we know that you hear us when we pray. And Father, you know each of these situations in every detail. And Father, we just ask that your spirit would minister to each need that's represented by these prayer requests. That Lord, that you would be with those who are sick, that you would be the healer, Father, the comforter for those who are in sorrow. Father, we just ask that you would minister to each need, those that are spoken and those that are unspoken. And Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love for us. And we thank you for our mothers and the roles that they have played in our lives and in our community and in our nation. And Father, we ask that as we prepare to hear the word, that you would open our hearts to receive the word with joy and with gladness. And Father, we ask that you would bless our speaker this morning, that you would anoint him to bring the word that you have prepared, and that, Father, we would receive it with love and joy. And Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory, for it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. We are delighted this morning to have Matthew Joe come as our speaker this morning. He and Tanner served in uh, the Air Force together at Whiteman. He may want to tell some stories as the pastor's not here. So find out. As you share to those. But we want you to come and share the word with us. And uh, everyone give him a warm welcome. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thanks for having me here. And uh, I won't get into the Tanner stories today. We'll save that for maybe next time. <laughs> no, Tanner's a good guy. And, uh, I sure know that he loves, he loves his church. He loves his people. Uh, so that's that's an awesome testament on his behalf. So happy Mother's Day, and uh, that's that's what today is all about. And like several have already said, we we thank our moms every day. You know, our moms have done a lot for us, and uh, so we're going to talk about moms today, of course. And uh, so <clears throat> just some uh, funnies for you, but some things that I think about that mom taught us, and some of you guys can relate to some of these. But mom taught us about religion. She said, you better pray that comes out of the carpet. <laughs> and, uh, Mom taught us about time travel. She said, uh, straighten up or I'll knock you in the next week. <laughs> you know? and, uh, Mom taught us some logic. She said, because I said so, that's why. <laughs> that's pretty logical. Mom taught us the foresight. How often did you hear, wear clean underwear, you might be in an accident. <laughs> Mom taught us stamina. She said, you'll sit there till that plate's clean. You know, mom taught us the circle of life. 
How many times a year I brought you into this world? I can take you out. <laughs> now, mom taught us justice. She said, one day I hope you have a child that acts just like <laughs> And uh, so, yes, so. But a mother is a embodiment of sacrifice and love. And uh, sure love our mothers. And uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Abe Lincoln said it best when he said, no man is poor who has a godly mother. And uh, I sure, sure am thankful for my mother. She passed about four years ago, and uh, but she taught me a lot, and uh, we'll sure visit about her and some other mothers today also. And uh, so I'll read you a verse, and then we'll uh, we'll pray and we'll get rolling here. So Psalms ninety four verse nine says, "He that planted the ear shall he not hear." So he that planted the ear shall he not hear. Talking about God. God sure hears us. Let's have a word for it. Like that, Father, thank you for this beautiful Sunday. Thank you that we're two or more together, Lord, we can worship you, we can praise you. <laughs> thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you that even with all our problems, we live in the greatest country on the planet. Uh, thank you so much for that. Thank you for Tanner. Thank you that he's preaching your word down here. And uh, read you through today, Lord, and help us to get something out of this and help us to uh, be thankful and praise our moms today. In your name, amen. amen. He that planted the ear shall be not here. So that's that's going to be a key part of what we talk about here. We're going to look at uh, 1 Kings chapter 17. If you have your Bibles, you can turn. If not, I'll, I'll be flipping through some pretty quickly. <clears throat> so in chapter 17 here, we, we learn about Ahab. He was a ruler, and uh, he was an evil ruler. Did a lot of bad things. And uh, he was evil in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> Elijah came and said, hey, God's going to put a severe drought here. There's going to be famine in the land. This is kind of basically your punishment. Hey, wake up, straighten up. Let's, let's get things right. <clears throat> and so uh, we see that Elijah, we'll, uh, we'll bounce back and forth here just a little bit, but down here in verse 8. It said, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, He's talking to Elijah, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there, behold. I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there, gathering of sticks, and he called her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Well, that's not too hard. She can go get some water. But it said, as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Hey, while you're in there, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in the barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me, and my son, that we may eat it and die. And uh, so some things I think about here, this widow woman. She's gathering two sticks. Uh, we've all had bonfires. We've all cooked stuff on a fire before. Two sticks doesn't burn very much, does it? It doesn't make a very big fire. But she knew I had very little meal. And uh, what I believe, and that's, I know some of you looking at my meal girl here today, but I believe that little woman spent a lot of time the last few days doing this, scraping that bottom. You know, she might have said, we've got to get that out. Scrape it, scrape it. There's probably two or three days that, you know, I got that much more. Oh, scrape that little girl. Scrape that little girl. I need a little more. But what I think is really cool about that is uh, <clears throat> I look at everything. We raise cattle and horses, and I look at a lot of things from that point of view. <clears throat> but what I think about is God's a busy man. You know, he's not too busy for the widow woman. But he's a busy man. He's out there answering all our prayers. He's in charge of this whole universe. Jesus said, my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. We do a lot of cattle work out in the Flint Hills of Kansas. And if you know anything about that area, there's a lot of hills out there. And he doesn't say he owns a thousand cattle. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. That's a lot of cattle. So I picture God must be a cowboy. I like it. <laughs> but he's out there checking his cattle. And then Flint Hills, there's 400,000 uh, acres just in the Flint Hills. And God wasn't in the Flint Hills. But that's what I'm thinking about. And uh, so he's maybe out there riding, checking his cattle. He's busy. If you live on a ranch like we do, it never ends. And uh, you got work all day, every day. 
You know, and so I picture God being busy, but I picture this little one scraping that mill barrel. And what, what's the verse? First verse that we look at. He that planted the ear, shall he not hear? And uh, to me, that's awesome. That this great universe, all us people, all the things going on, all the things God has to do, but he hears. He's like, oh, there's my little one. I got to go take care of her. And, uh, that's amazing. And uh, no different in our lives. God hears us whenever we need something. So we're scraping that mill barrel. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, there's my child. I got to go help him out. Come yeah. on. And so that's awesome. You know, a mama knows her child's cry. Little Anthony here, when he cries, mama knows if he's just out there being hungry. Or she knows, oh, that one's serious. I got to go help him. And uh, as a seven year old boy, a lot of them are just being loud and being hungry. <laughs> but whenever it's real, Mama knows. And uh, just like Jesus knows, we hear him scraping that in the <laughs> I was talking with uh, Scott earlier, but last week we had our big spring braiding out in Flint Hills, and so we're roping cattle, calves, and we're braiding them. And it's amazing. You can have 100 cows out there, but when you rope that one and you stick the brain on and it falls just a little bit, that mama, no matter where she's at, she comes up and checks on baby. You know, all 100 of them don't come. They go, oh, I hear her. He's planted here. Here, mm-hmm. mama cow, no matter where she is, she comes up and says, hey, baby, are you okay? And uh, I think that's the way our God is, too. Yes. I think we're busy. You know, and he's busy. But, oh, he heard the scraping of the mail and goes, oh, that's my child. That's my little woman. And uh, so just amazing, amazing. Pretty awesome to think about. You know, we're such a small thing in this big universe, but God hears us. Yeah. And so, we'll move on here. We're going to talk about a few different women in the Bible, but uh, cool, if you back up to verse 4 there, it says, if you know this story, when he's talking about Elijah, Elijah's not in good favor of Ahab or Jezebel, you know, because he went and said, hey, you are fixing to be punished. This is what's happening. And uh, so, you know, don't shoot the messenger where they wanted to shoot the messenger. And uh, so now he's kind of, kind of a fugitive, kind of hiding out. And he's in the same land there, and so he doesn't have any food either. But up in verse 4, four it says, <laughs> God said, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee. And uh, so that's pretty awesome. He can command the animals to take care of us, you know. Then down here it says, I have commanded the widow one. And so just a little sidetrack there, pretty awesome that God's in charge. He's in control. <laughs> Even our daily life, things we worry about, it's okay. God's in control. And he hears us. And so... Widow woman scraping the mill barrel. And it says she went and got a two sticks. <laughs> this is just my opinion. The Bible doesn't tell us. But you know what? Most mill barrels are made out of wood. If she knew that was her last meal and she wasn't going to die, why didn't she just burn her red mill barrel? Cook on top of it. I believe because she had faith. And she thought, hmm, good. I better keep this. It might be God coming along and fill it up. And so, just things to think about. And then, uh, <clears throat> If we jump down to verse uh, 15, it says, And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, meaning she fed him, just like he said, just like God, God said, I commanded. So she's fulfilling her, her commitment to God. God said, feed him. She did. It says, She and he and her house did eat many days. And then the next verse says, And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord. And so she she did what she was told to do. Even though she's sitting there and she's scraping by, barely barely feeding her own child. And I'm guessing her child was young, couldn't go out and get a job. You know, otherwise he would have been out working. And he would have maybe been out gathering the sticks. So he must have been a small child. She was preparing the last meal. God said, hey, feed my prophet. Elijah came and said, hey, feed me. <clears throat> and she did. And now it says, never ran out. That's, right. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? That's awesome. You know? We, we run out sometimes. We don't fulfill our end of the deal. But God fulfills his end of the deal. And so this mother here, what an example she was. Showing us her faith. And uh, showing her believing in God. You know. And so pretty pretty great stuff. going to move over and uh, talk. We're, like I said, we're going to talk about a couple mothers briefly. But over in uh, Exodus. Exodus 2. Anybody remember a guy named uh, Moses? So, anybody know this is a, it took me a minute to find it, but anybody know Moses' mother's name? Kind of a tricky name, not a name we hear about all the time, but it's only in there, I believe, once. Jacobin. 
So that's Moses' mother, Jacobin. And uh, we know very little about her, and uh, she's only mentioned there once, but if we look down here, uh, so at that time, they, uh, it was instructed for them that they had to, they wanted the, all the boy, men, child, to be killed, and they had to go on the river of Nile, and they, they would die. Well, here Jacobin, she had a, had this baby. Well, of course, no mother wants to give up her baby, and uh, so... It says here, uh, this chapter 2, verse 2, it says, And the woman conceived and bare a son, we know this is Jacob, and Moses is her son, when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. So a couple things I see right off the bat. I like to look at things from different angles. And uh, a couple things I see right off the bat. She saw that he was a goodly child. And, uh, you know, mama had, mama saw and believed in her child. How many times... Do we need just mama to believe in us? And how many times does that make us get so much more done? And, uh, and do we want to do it correctly? Because mama believes in us. And uh, you know this world is a rough world right now. And uh, we need somebody to believe in us. And it sure is nice that we have awesome moms that believe in us. So right off the bat, he had a mama that believed in him. Said, and she hid him three months. Now, y'all that have had a small child, what's it like to hide him for three months? screaming baby. I don't, that'd be hard. I can't hide a seven-year-old for five minutes, much less three months. And uh, so, the Bible doesn't tell us, but you know what? I bet Jochebed is praying for the barrel. I bet she is praying. But she said, God, help me hide this child. Help me not to cry. Take care of me. So every time I think about the widow woman scraping that barrel, I think about praying. I think about God hearing our prayers. And uh, hide a child for three months at any age, but especially a baby. That'd be tough. You know, I and mean, then thinking about a baby child, <clears throat> we, at that point in time, how awesome are our mothers? You know, we depend on our mother at that point in time for everything. They have to feed us, they have to change us, they have to keep us clean, they have to keep us healthy. And so moms, moms are pretty amazing. And so we, we definitely thank you. Thank you for being awesome moms. Um, another thing about she was a she was a faithful instrument of God's purpose. She acted out of faith in God. Her faith is what raised Moses. If we look down here and we'll read on, it says, "When she could no longer hide him, she took him, took for him an ark of bell rushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put her child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the riverbank. So she put it down in the weeds in the water and uh, hid it there." Said, and his sister, Moses' sister, stood afar off <clears throat> to whip what, what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh, so Pharaoh is killing all these boys. So we already know this, Pharaoh is not a good fellow here. And, uh, but it says his daughter, which at that time his daughter would have been under his command also, would have been doing everything that he tells her to do. But the Lord used her here. It said, came down and wash yourself at the river. And her maidens walked along by the river's side, and when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. So she's like, hey, go get that. And when she had opened it up, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him, and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. So, right there, it shows that she had compassion. She knew who the child, that it was a Hebrew child. Said, then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call thee a nurse of the Hebrew women? And shall make nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And, and the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. So a couple awesome things I see about this mother, and pretty amazing. I don't believe in coincidences. Right. And, uh, you know, here this child is, this mother, uh, what kind of faith would it take to give up your child like that? And to put it in this hiding. <clears throat> and God rewarded her faith. And uh, God said, here, we're going to go about this unconventional way, but we're going to find you here. And then guess what? Hey, I need you to nurse this baby. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, it's no accident. She got to nurse her own baby. Yeah. Right. And uh, that's, that's phenomenal. Yeah. And that's that's being in the right place, being where God told you to be. And that's that's her, having that faith in God. To God, I give this child to you. I know it's mine. But I give it to you. And uh, came back to her. She got to nurse her own child, raise her own child. 
If you, uh, if you do any study on children, they say by age five, kind of sets the tone for what that kid's going to be. And so from the time they're baby to age five, they say it's the most critical years to train a child. Some even believe up to age seven. But up to age five is very critical. And uh, we'll see later, but, you know, the verse, the Bible says, train up a child in the way you should go. Right here in verse 10, it says, And the child grew, and she brought him into Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So now the child's old enough. And in my study in here, it said they, they typically, in that, that age, nurse the baby from age, between age three or five is when they quit nursing. So this kid's at least three years old, Moses, maybe up to age five. Um, nursing was done. Gave to Pharaoh's daughters. So now Pharaoh's daughters are raised. Well, we already see that Pharaoh's household is not good. Not a good Christian upbringing. Is. They're doing a lot of bad things. Pharaoh's daughter, <clears throat> not a good Christian lady. But we see that his mom, Jochebed, had the baby for at least three to five years. So that upbringing is what made Moses who Moses is. And uh, that foundation there. So we got to give credit again to mom. Mom. Mom is what made Moses what he is. And uh, <clears throat> so Moses, <clears throat> Moses makes good and bad choices like all of us have. And, uh, but he's considered in the Bible one of the most important prophets. And uh, so that's, that's pretty awesome. Moses was a miracle-making machine. And uh, there's at least 10, 10 miracles in the Bible that were related to Moses. So I found that to be pretty cool. And uh, just a few of them was he, um, he got water from a stone. That's pretty cool. You know, we've been praying for this rain. I'm glad we got some rain, but starting to think maybe we needed some water from a stone. You know? And uh, he parted the sea. We all know that story. And, uh, that's pretty awesome. I think he got uh, chocolate stains out of white shirts. You know, <laughs> not really have you seen if you're away. But uh, yeah, that's it. That's the kind of guy that Moses was. He did perform like 10 miracles in the Bible. He did a lot of amazing stuff. And it wasn't because he lived in the house of Pharaoh. I guarantee you that. It's because he had a godly mom. It goes back to mama. And so I, I love all the stories about mama. My mom, she uh, she passed about four years ago. And uh, of course, that was a sad day. Not, not happy at all. <clears throat> but at her funeral, all these different kids came in. And told us all these stories about my mom. And man, it was amazing. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me. mom and dad ran the bus route and uh, for church. So on Saturdays they'd go visit all these kids and families and see what they needed and make sure they were coming tomorrow. On Sunday mornings we gathered up early and we went and picked up all these kids on the bus and brought them to church. Some of these kids didn't have clothes. Some of these kids, it's not no dirty kids, you know, some of these kids didn't have food. My mom was making breakfast. They couldn't go home right away because their parents were out of town or whatever. Mom was bringing to our house. You know, mom was a garage sale queen. And uh, most of our clothes came from garage sales. And you know what? Most of those church kids, their clothes came from garage sales from my mom's house. You know? And uh, mom and dad weren't wealthy people at all. And uh, dad farmed in the 80s. And uh, any of you that farmed in the 80s, you know that interest spiked and life wasn't the greatest for, for a growth cropper. And uh, yet, Mama, she kept on taking care of all these kids. And at her funeral, a lot of these church kids came and told me what a blessing my mom was. And uh, that was something. And then Mom helped out at uh, one of the local schools. She cashiered at the lunch lady. And again, Mom didn't have a lot of money. But there was kids that didn't have money for lunch. Mom said, oh, it's, it's free today. She had put that $5 a week, you know. And uh, a lot of her co-workers come and told me, they said, your mom didn't have a dime, and she'd go figure out where to get a dime from. She'd pay for those kids' lunch. And uh, it was just amazing. You know, she did so much for us. I have two sisters. She did so much for us. But it was awesome to hear what she did for everyone else, too. And uh, that's, that's a good job at home. <clears throat> Jump over to uh, Luke. And uh, trying to get some... There's a lot of good moments in the Bible. We're just briefly covering some of them, but a lot of, a lot of good stuff in So Luke chapter 1, 26 through 56, is uh, introduced to a lady named Mary and uh, had a baby Jesus. We know that story. But here it says, And the sixth night the angel Gabriel was sent from God and 
in a city of Galilee in Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. So, and the angel came to her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among the women. So we see that Mary was quite a godly woman. You know, have favor amongst God. I sure hope that I have just a slight favor amongst God, you know. And here she says she clearly did. Said, and when she saw him, she was troubled. And that she probably didn't talk to many angels. <laughs> I'd be a little troubled by that too. And said, at his saints, and, and cast her and cast in her mind what manner of sal- salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. If we read through a few more verses there, she has a few questions. She's like, wait, wait a minute. You know, uh, I don't know this man biblically. It's impossible for me to be pregnant, you know? And uh, she's asking a few more questions. She wasn't she wasn't saying no or anything like that. She just said, hey, I have a few questions if you don't mind. And uh, so answered all her questions and said, then at the end, the angel said, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And then the very next thing in verse 38, Mary says, and Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Basically right there, Mary said, so be it. I'll do it. Yes, sir. Let's do this. And uh, so Mary, we see again, was willing. And she had favor in God, so we know obviously she's a godly woman. And um, God uses godly women. And so it's, it's pretty amazing to me. That would be startling to me also. I said, hey, this is going to happen. And even though this is impossible, nothing's impossible with God. This is what's going to be. Mary asked a couple questions. Said, all right, let's do this. So be it. And uh, so pretty awesome mama right there. And if we, if we look in chapter 2, we all know the story of, of Jesus. <clears throat> Whenever, you know, now they, we'll just read some of it. It said, it came to pass in those days, and went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And we see there, Joseph also went from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth, and to Judea, and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was a house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child. So we know now they have this long travel, and she's quite pregnant. And uh, the lady said, Mama said, I've been pregnant. You know, your life changes, and things are harder. And uh, so, and it's hotter, and it's harder to walk, and so many things with that. And so I feel that uh, Mary had some great struggles ahead of her. It's, uh, whenever I was doing some study, and they said that that trip would have probably took seven to ten days, depending on how they traveled. And there was some hostility in the area, and so they might have not been able to take a drive through. And so seven to ten days, that means they were sleeping somewhere. The Bible doesn't really tell us that part of the story, but they might have just been sleeping on the roadside. And, you know, some say she came in on a donkey. I didn't find that, but she may have. But whether you're on a donkey or you're walking, that's a long way. Spend seven or ten days on either one. We ride horses all the time. Spend seven or ten days straight traveling somewhere. That's a long time. That's, that wears on somebody in great shape, you know, and uh, it's really hard if you're a great with child fixing to have a baby. And so what I see about Mary is she had some struggles. She had rough training to conquer, hostilities. <clears throat> when she got there, remember it says no room in the inn. So now she doesn't even have a holiday in the state, you know. And so she had uh, baby Jesus and laid him in a manger. And so that that... Our thinking is, you know, that was in a straw bed, and there's probably animals around, and so on and so forth. Then we think about all the visitors she has. You know, I don't know too many women that want to have a baby and then have 4,000 people in there in the bedroom seeing the baby. You know, that's a lot. And uh, I don't know that number, but we talk about the wise men, we talk about the shepherds, we talk about everybody else. So she had a lot of visitors. You know, that's a lot on her. But what I see from Mary... Is she had faith in God? And she's like, this is my duty. Yes, sir, let's do this. I see that Mary is full of grace. And God lived in her. And she had favor in God. That's awesome right there. Like I said, I, I hope that I can have an ounce of favor with God. And here, the angel came and said, you're not Mary. You have favor with God. And Mary fulfilled her duty. And yet she was an awesome mom. She went through all the struggles. And I promise you, some of those struggles, she was like, Right from that mail girl. She's like, 
I got a I got to have a baby out here, you know. I got to sleep here, but she had faith in God. God heard her, just like He heard that male girl. And so, another awesome mom. And the, the last couple moms here we're going to look at doesn't say much about them in the Bible, but in Second Timothy <clears throat> chapter one verse five, this is the only time I'm trying to mention in the Bible. But it says, "When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith." That is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded thee that in thee also. So he's talking about Timothy. And uh, Timothy, we know in the Bible he's a great preacher. He's well known for being a great preacher. He was an example, a great example to other preachers and to other believers. And all this came because he had a mom. Not because he was anybody, but because his mom, Eunice, raised him up. And where did she get that from? She got it from her mom, Lois. And so I love that the Bible shows here generations. You know, Grandma taught that into Mom. Mama taught that into her children. And I feel like, not to be doom and gloom, but our world's not a great place right now. And I believe we've lost a lot of that from Mama's passing it down to the next mom, to the next mom. It's it's Mama's job. And Dad's, Dad's job, too. But today, uh, we get to focus on new moms, so... But us dads, we need to step up and do our part as well. <clears throat> so things I think about that are mother's jobs. And uh, we'll bounce back to Deuteronomy chapter 6. And uh, 4, 4 through 7 says, Hear, O Israel, thy Lord our God is, is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee in this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto the children. So I was telling you right here, Mamas, hey, you gotta do this, you gotta believe in God, you gotta have him in your heart, and you gotta teach it to your children. And shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Basically, he's giving you a whole lot of things here, but he's saying it all the time, all the time. <clears throat> and he goes on for several verses. And then, and he just other ways of saying, hey, this needs to be a part of it all the time, every day. If we look down in verse uh, 17, it said, He shall diligently keep thy commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes, which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. So I feel like he named 40, 40 different things. And then as a caveat, he's like, just in case I miss anything, do what's good in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> And uh, so that was his kind of little disclaimer, I think, that said, hey, all the time, every time, always. And so that's that's part of a mama's job. And then look at uh, Proverbs 1.8. It says, my son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. And uh, we know a lot, when I grew up, I can't speak for your house, but dad worked a lot. And uh, I told you, in the 80s there, farmers were going broke, so dad... Did what a lot of guys did. He had three jobs. And uh, mom was at home raising us kids. And uh, so, you know, mom did have to make the law a lot of times. And uh, my dad's a good man. But mom had to run the household. Mom had to put the law down. And right there is what it says. It says she did. Now, Proverbs 22 6. child and the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And so some things I think about there, back up to Moses. Well, if we study Moses' life, we see that he didn't always make good choices. He did make some good choices and God sure used him. But it says train up a child the way he should go. That wasn't from Pharaoh's daughter. His good training didn't come from that. It came from his mom. And uh, that's that's why Moses was the man he was. Right there it says, Mamas, that's your job. Train up that child. And uh, like I said, it's Mom's Day, but Dad, that's our jobs too. <clears throat> Proverbs 29, 15. Just over a couple pages here. It says, The rod and your proof 
give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings his mother to shame. And so, again, back to back to training the rod, spanking. When I grew up, I promise you I got a spanking. And uh, <clears throat> my dad, he didn't have to spank it very often, but when he did, he was serious about it and he was firm about it. My mama, she did nothing wrong, but I'll tell you a little story on her. If mom had to spank you, she got a little more excited while she was spanking you. <laughs> and so if dad said you were getting five swats, guess what? You got five swats, he gave you a talking to, you moved on. Mom swats didn't hurt as bad, but if mom said you was getting five, you might get 27. <laughs> and, uh, five was just a warm up. And, uh, and it might be with whatever she found. And uh, I'm not saying she abused at all. And uh, she, she definitely shaped me. I haven't always made the right choices, but just like that said, go back to the right ways. And go back to those right ways because my mama raised me. She spanked me. <laughs> and she got after me. And uh, little Anthony, he's, he's an angel, but uh, sometimes he's a fallen angel. Sometimes he's got spanked. And uh, it, sure, it sure changes things. And yeah, if you can see him, he's grinning and shaking his head. He knows. He knows. And uh, so, moms are amazing, amazing people. And I believe that part of why the world is in such bad shape is because moms haven't passed it down. And so I'm not trying to trying to be hard on you. I'm just trying to say, here it is. And that's same with us dads. We're at fault too. But we need to be passing this down. We need to be raising our children right so they can raise the next children right. There's there's a lot of, I'd say bad children out there, but I'd mostly say bad parenting out there. Nobody, nobody showed them what kind of child to be. They didn't have a mama that loved them. They didn't have a mama that said, Lord, I know you hear this. I need you. You know, my child needs you. Everybody needs you. And so I think about that scraping the real girl all the time. God knows. But when was the last time you talked to him? You know? And that he wants to hear from him. It's like mama and other kids. Sometimes kids get busy and and you know, I was guilty of this sometimes too. I didn't talk to my mom as often as I should. Guess what? Mother's Day, you get a phone call, don't you? And uh, God doesn't want you just to wait and hear from you when you're in trouble. And uh, we're all guilty of that. He wants to hear from us all the time. And uh, he, he knows. He can hear you straight from the real girl, but he'd like you to dial him up and have a conversation about it. And so, some of mom's jobs. <clears throat> I'll go back to uh, Abraham Lincoln here. Another quote. I didn't. I wasn't picking on Abraham Lincoln. He just had a lot of good quotes about his mom. And uh, if you if you read about Abraham Lincoln, his mom actually died when he was at a young age. I think nine. I may be misspoken, but but that tells me he was older than five. So his mom put a lot of this in him. But another thing Abraham Lincoln said. He said, "I remember my mother's prayers, and they have always followed me. They have clung to me all my life. How amazing is that?" You know, he knew, hey, Mama prayed for me. And it was important. And so I, I think about that a lot. I'm going to share a letter with you, parts of the letter. And uh, I've never shared this letter with anybody. And in, in some ways, it makes me sad. In some ways, it does, makes me happy. I know my mama loved me. And uh, as you know, I'm at Tanner in the Air Force. And I wasn't with Tanner on this particular trip. But after 9 11, I got sent to Spain. Worked there for a few months. After that, I got sent to a uh, desert vacation and uh, enjoyed a lot of sand and wind and sunshine and not much people. In that time, so that was 2002, in that time, my mom sent me a care package. And uh, said, dear son, hope you like some of the things. She tells me and her sisters bought some of the things and they made me snickerdoodle cookies, which is, by the way, if you want to send me anything, I want snickerdoodle cookies. <laughs> <Go for it. laughs> And uh, but after my mom talks about them for a minute, this is what she says. She says, love you, son. Please take care. Also, I sent you this Bible. Didn't know if you took one with you or not, and I pray that you get close to the Lord like you once was. And like I said, that, that hurts because I didn't tell mama, hey, I'm not doing everything I ought to do. But you know what? Mom knew. She knew I wasn't doing everything I ought to do. And, uh, she said, I hope you get back. I'm praying for you. You know, that's what a mom does. And uh, we see in the Bible here, all the times mamas, they had to scrape that mirror. Well, I guarantee you, 2002, 
I, I wouldn't say I was a horrible person by any means, but I wasn't close to God like I used to be. And in 2002, my mom sent me a Bible, sent me a letter. She was scraping that little girl. She's like, get back to it, boy. I got faith in you. Get back to it. And uh, that's amazing. Moms, moms are amazing. I'm so appreciative. And so I love my mama, and I appreciate her. And uh, thank you guys for being good moms. <clears throat> and so I don't, I don't like to end any, any message without, without a, uh, a chance of knowing what this is all about. You know, the Romans wrote. I know a lot of you know the Romans wrote. But if, for, uh, chapter 3, verse 10, it says, None are righteous, no, not one. I guarantee it. I'm not. Made plenty of mistakes. We all sin. That's what he's telling us. Romans 3.23, it says, When all have sinned, we come short of the glory of God. And so, he's not painting a very good picture there for us so far. You know, 6.23, now he's telling us the wages of sin is death. Wages, you should get paid for doing something. Now he's telling us it's death. And we know that that death is in the end of hell. So, so far, not a good picture. Uh, chapter 5, verse 8, God intended his love toward us. That why would we get sinners? Christ died for us. We just had Easter not too long ago. Not only did he die, he was broke. And so we know, honey, this is looking a little better, you know. 1013, it says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's telling us right there, hey, ask. You're going to get it. Chapter 10, 9 through 13, it says, If we confess with our mouth, if we believe in our heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's right. And so... It starts off kind of doom and gloom. It tells us what we deserve. But he says, even though you deserve this, you don't have to have this. Right. This is a gift. Come on. You know, gifts are free. I'm giving this to you. You just have to accept it. Anthony, where are you going to go when you die? How come? <laughs> I need a better answer than that. Bingo. I just put him on the spot. I didn't prep him for this. But if you heard him, he said, I asked Jesus into my heart. He ended last July. He, he asked me for months. Is that because mom was trying to teach him Jesus. Daddy's trying to teach him Jesus. You know? And then he said, hey, I want to go to heaven. And I said, okay. We mentioned it. We talked about it. And I left it alone. And uh, <clears throat> he's six years old. Not that a child can't understand. The Bible says they can understand. But I didn't want to rush into it. He asked us again. We talked about it. We just let it ride. And then he basically came in and said, Hey, it's time. Let's do this. And uh, so he prayed and asked Jesus into his heart, just like he told us. And I didn't put him on the spot there. I mean, I put him on the spot. I didn't prep him for that. And so that's amazing. That's how we get there. It's good for and, Yes. And, and we, it's all <clears throat> comes back to mama. Comes back to daddy. Today's mama day, but it comes back to all of us. And uh, we need to pray. We need to have faith like those mamas had. We need to believe in our child. We need to believe in each other. We need to help each other. And we need to be able to see Jesus. Mary had favor in the sight of the Lord. Don't you think that that means she was living like she should be a wizard? And the other people could see that. You know, he didn't just randomly pick somebody. He's like, I have faith. She's, she's living like she already lived. And, uh, and he, he used all these wonderful women to make wonderful gifts. And uh, that went on to fulfill his work. You know, and, and just like my mom. My mom was a great lady and, and uh, done so much. And had uh, done so much for other people. She raised us kids. But as, as I told you, at her funeral, I found out all the things she did for so many other people. And so, thank you, mamas. But let's, we're in, we're in a world of hurt with where we're living. So let's be better moms. Let's be better dads. Let's push it down the line. So I'd like to have a moment of invitation. We're going to do a, <clears throat> he's going to play a hymn here for us. But some things to think about. We don't come to church just so our people can see our new outfit or so they can see that we went to church. My buddy preaches in a Calvary church in Colorado, and he always says, this is a sick pen for sinners. It's not a show ring for saints. And if you're here to show off, you're in the wrong spot. You know, we need to come here and get fed. Nothing worse than you know, I, I told you we do a lot of cattle. Cattle belly up to the food trucks and there's no food in it. You know? And so I hate to come to church and not be fed. And uh, this is what it's about. Uh, pastor that I had grown up, I don't even call worthy. This has stuck in my mind for a long time. 
Now I'm not preaching to you moms, and I'm not preaching to you dad. Now I'm preaching to Matt Joey. And uh, because I'm, I'm guilty of this, he said, you know what? There's two times you should go down to your altar. And he said, one, when God spoke to you. That makes a lot of sense. I should go to the altar. He said, number two, when God didn't speak to you. And uh, again, I'm preaching to Matt Joe, but I'm just sharing that with you. So we're going to have a little invitation here. I'm going to be at the altar because that's where I should be. Whether God spoke to me or whether God didn't speak to me. And we need to pray for each other. And we need to pray for our country. And <clears throat> I don't want to get into your own business or get too political or nothing, but y'all have a liberation, liberation day coming up. And that's awesome. You guys need to be praying for your church. You need to be praying for yourselves. And so, come to the altar. Let's pray.
Yeah, Father, thank you again that you get to come here and worship you, Lord. Uh, thank you for my mom, Lord. Thank you that I can share my mom with these folks, Lord. Please help us to do better. Each and every one of us, we can do better. You know that. Help us. And uh, we appreciate you hear us scraping the mill barrels. Now, let us, let us open up that line of communication. Let us do our part. Let us go tell others about you, Lord. Not be ashamed. The Bible tells us. Let's go do it. Again, thank you that we live in the greatest country in the world. Thank you for all these mamas here today. Thank you that we, we've had some good mamas. Thank you for the good mamas and grandmothers you showed us in the Bible. Help Pastor Tanner if they're traveling, helping to enjoy this trip, and helping to get home safely. Help all these nice folks to get, get home safely today, too. Thank you, Jesus. In your name. Amen. Thank you for coming to church. Please show your appreciation for us. If all of my will stand, we'll dismiss with the Lord's Prayer. We break go. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Go in Jesus' name and be blessed. Amen. Amen. Go get the flowers and come back Push finish on her in the yeah. Oh.